Hello, this is Chatterlock1. Today we are going to make a enemy health bar over our enemy pawns. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to get our character and we're going to make a socket above the character with an empty actor in it to project our health bar. Yeah, so let's begin. So, let's go ahead and open up BDK first. And let's go ahead and find the uh, default skill to mesh for Unreal Tournament, which is, should be the um, cathoid, the LAM cathoid. We're going to go into the socket manager, which is right here. And we're going to make a new socket under the root bone, which is B underscore root. And we're going to name it health bar socket. And we're going to put it above his head. But you don't have to put it above his head. You can put it like over here or over there, whichever one you prefer. But I'm going to put it above his head for the sake of the tutorial. And let's exit out of it. And hit save. Save selected item. Now let's go ahead and go into Visual Studio or whatever IDE system you have. And we have a pre-set game, it's just test game, UT game, use cosmic and equals true. Simple, simple and stuff. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna add a new item for a pawn class. We're gonna call it test pawn. And extend from UT pawn. So first of all, we're gonna call this function a post begin play. This is like right when the game starts, we're gonna do these specific parameters. So function post begin play and we're going to do super dot no super come on, dot post begin play so we can override it and we're going to do this thing called get a local player controller okay so you're going to get the local player controller like whoever's controlling this dot pawn no not dot dot my HUD dot add local add post stringer actor. And we get this post stringer actor to render for the HUD. Basically, what this is doing, get a local player controller. We're going to get the controller, like what pod we are controller. We're going to get our HUD and we're going to add a post render actor, which is this this is going to render for that. Now we're going to do a function called actually an event called post render for. I'm going to type in these parameters here real quick and I'll explain here quick. Player controller PC canvas canvas vector camera camera direction. Alright so you see what's going to do because we called this add post render actor. We're actually going to post render for this. Basically, it's going to post render for that player controller. It's going to basically type casting canvas, which is in the HUD class, and it's going to get the camera position and direction of it. But we don't really necessarily need those right now. So we're just going to do a quick test, make sure it's actually working, make sure we're actually getting this actor called to the right pawn or the local player controller, which is us. So I'm going to do info dot game dot broadcast self so we're gonna tell this class to send a message saying I am working basically what this is doing is just sending a message in the game to say hey I'm working yo what's up you know whatever so I'm gonna build that do one more, one more thing we're gonna pull, make this placeable just for the hell of it so you place it from the content browser Okay, we got that working, so let's go ahead and go into the UDK editor. Now, let's go ahead and go into the skeletal messages. What am I going to skeletal messages from her? Go to actor classes over on top on the content browser. Go uncategorize, and you should see a test pawn. I'm going to click and drag it. I mean, it's not going to render because you're not, you're not telling it to render in the game. Well, unless it's in game mode, it's not going to render in the editor, but it will render in the game mode. So let's go ahead and set up our world properties. 
do test game, test game, and we're gonna build, build pass, play. And of course, it is definitely working. It's saying I am working when we actually look at it, which means this character is rendering on the screen, so it's going to work. But when we not look at it, it's not going to say I am working. It's not going to, eh, eh, that's where you get an eh, from. I mean, it's, it's working. But, all right, so we got that working just fine. So, let's go ahead and we're going to actually save this level for the hell of it, just so we have to re we can actually debug it. And um, Visual Studio is going to do test.udk, which I've had a previous one, but I'm going to overwrite it. So exit, and go back to Visual Studio, and go to your project, go to properties, and all you have to do is do these check marks, load map the startup, test.udk, and then start a specific game type, which is game testing, which is right here, dot test game, which is this right here, which is our game type. You know, I did all this other stuff, sales, start movies, I'm enable unpublished mods, and stuff like that. It's just simple, you know, setting up of our project stuff. Make sure you already know that by now. Alright, so since we got this working, now, what we have to do now is we're going to do a couple things. We're going to make a local vector, call it screen position, not screen pose abbreviated. We're going to tell screen pose to equal canvas.project, which of course can project under canvas means project a 3D vector to a 2D coordinates. Basically what it's saying is what's rendering on the screen, we're going to make it on 2D coordinates to the screen. So we're going to make the location of this test pawn to project a 2D coordinate for the screen. And we're going to do tell the canvas to set position of what we're going to be drawing here. We're going to set to screen pose dot x screen pose dot y. I mean, you could actually say canvas dot project dot location dot x canvas dot project dot I mean, canvas project location dot y, but it'd be easier just to set it on a temporary vector like this, so you don't have to type as much. And also, it's easier for like editing and like calling out different variables for stuff like that. I'm going to do canvas dot draw rect. And we're going to make it be the this test pond's health for the width, so we can kind of see like shrinking when we actually kill it. And we're going to make it like a height of 10, so it's not so big, but it's enough to see. So let's go ahead and build it. <coughs> And we'll hit play to see if it works. And what do you know? It's working just fine. You can see the health bar right there, but it's on the bad location where the beat the root location's like right there, but Visa I think it's at SP, I don't know if it's either there or there, but let's see if it actually drains the health. Which it does, definitely drains the health. Drains the health. So now let's go ahead and make it so that we have it set to our socket. You know, it's probably wondering why is it not set to socket? We're going to get, get to that. I'm just kind of showing step by step how it's kind of working. So let's go ahead. We're going to make a new um, class for a class called Health Bar Actor. And we're going to extend Actor. It's just a very simple thing. It's just an empty class just for the sake of default location. The reason why I'm doing this instead of like just why not get the socket location is because the socket only calls relative location rotation and scale. For some reason in post render for it won't work and that's why I'm using an empty actor that, does, that won't render anything to get a definite location rotation and scale. That's I don't know for some reason it works that better that way. So let's go ahead and build it so we can actually call it in our test pawn function test pawn class. So I'm going to call it a variable. We're going to get global. Call health bar actor. I'm going to call it HB actor. So under our post begin play, we're going to right before when the game begins, we want to attach that actor to that custom socket we made. So what we're going to do, we're going to do this. We're going to do if mesh does not equal none and <coughs> mesh dot get socket by name, the name of the socket being health bar socket. 
Now, before I go explain any more, I'm going to tell you what mesh is real quick. It's basically mesh is under is basically like the skeletal mesh component in UTPON. I'll show you here real quick. So, we're going to go into the default properties and find mesh. So, when you call the uh, skeletal mesh component, not the overlay mesh, it's just a different one. This is the one where actually it renders the skeletal mesh component. It's just like you know, where you set up the entries, the mesh of the character, and stuff like that. And you see this here, and you'll see this here, which is the mesh variable. Mesh equals W pawn skeletal mesh component. Basically, mesh is a variable on top of skeletal mesh component. I believe. Let's double check here quick. I'm not sure if it's in this one or it's in another one. If I'm next, 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 next. I'm not going to do that. I think it's up top. I can remember. Anyways, let's continue with this tutorial. So, basically you're saying if this mesh is not equal to one, and also if mesh, the socket of the mesh named health bar socket does not equal none, we are going to do something. <coughs> We're going to do mesh.getSocket or location rotation. So we're going to get the location rotation of this socket if they both exist. So the socket name health bar socket and basically it's like a kind of like in and out kind of thing. So basically getting the socket, that custom socket we made, we're gonna get the the two the vector location and the rotator rotation. Which I forgot to do one tiny thing. We're gonna get a local vector lock call it lock for location. We're gonna do a local rotator for rot abbreviate for rotation. So let's go ahead and go back here. So we're gonna put lock for location and rot for rotation. So then we can actually get these two variables and make it for whatever replacement we want for from those locations. So we are going to do <coughs> HB actor equals spawn Tell the class to be our new custom class name, which is health bar actor. And we don't need the owner, we don't need a tag, but we do need the vector, which is the location we just got that socket, which you can put log. Same with the rotation, which is a spawn and rotation, if we want. Then, if hb actor does not equal none, basically if it's if it exists within this class, which could be just spawned it, we're going to hard attach it, which is HB actor dot set to base. Basically not only for a hard attach, but you know it's for specific things, it's just usually helps pretty well run. Make the new base be itself, which is the HB actor. We don't need the vector, but we need a skeleton mesh, which would be mesh. Which is this test pawn mesh from Extinct V2 pawn. And we're going to need that, um, the attachment name, which is the socket name, which is health bar socket. Bingo. So that should be the hard attaching. That should work just fine. Now, we don't have to use location of this actor anymore. We can now use HP actor be the location instead. So we can do HB actor dot location. Now this should actually project our hard attached empty actor from the socket, which is HB actor's location. So it should actually fall around this one. So let's go ahead and hit play and test it. Of course it works just fine. It's on top of where the socket is, exactly where it is. Let's see if it actually works when we do drain out. It works just fine. Everything's working just fine, and that's basically it. Well, if you like this video, hit like, subscribe, and I'll be definitely posting more videos. Maybe probably do another one of these, but with scale form instead. And um, I just want to thank the. Um, Epic Games Forums with UDK programming for a lot of help with this as well. And I hope this video helps everybody out, and I will see you guys later.